I forgot to put the um the title that I want to talk about today, but I'm gonna piggyback off of um a video that I post that received a lot of you know opinions and that's perfectly fine with me because all is God vibrating at different frequencies. Hey, I'm fine, babe. Marianne, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. How are you? Somebody named Oven. <laughs> that was funny. So I'm going to piggyback off of that and talk about this so-called alpha male and alpha female. And I normally don't talk about relationships, but I want to tie it into consciousness and not being conscious. And you know, I'm going to throw a little bit of the biblical text. I've been able to break it down to help everybody, wherever they are in a journey, to find out where they are vibrating at and maybe you want to change your frequency maybe you're not maybe you just want to better understand and look at things through the eyes of source like i always talk about here source and see through the eyes of god and know that all things are perfect and there's balance in this universe and it is not about you know looking at other people and calling them you know um punks or you know sus or whatever the you know the little name in the street is for them you know whatever they call them i don't know what they call them i don't keep up what they talking about in the street but you know what i'm talking about you know it's not about name calling or judging nobody it's about knowing where you are in your journey and evolving to christ consciousness for you or being in the state of being that you choose to be in so basically the video that i was out uh, that i'm referring to is the one about the alpha male and alpha female per se i was talking about the law of gender actually and in the comments a lot of people pretty much were telling me that i work for the devil because um i talked about the law instead of the lord l-o-r-d but i just look at the biblical text different and you don't have to you look at it and you believe in your jesus you believe in your your lord and savior jesus christ if that's what you want to do with your journey but based upon where i am in my journey I don't look at the biblical text like that. I look at it as so many different levels, you know, astrology, um, metaphysics, um, uh, quantum physics, all kind of just hidden Jews, numerology. Uh, I look at the physical reality. I look at the state of being of the Christ conscious one. And I just look at it as a story about me, about you and our journey to evolve and that we're all vibrating at different frequencies, AKA we're all at different stages of being, but the totality of all of us, the collective consciousness of all of us, everything is perfect. And in, 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 in this law that everything must be balanced because God is a God of order and instruction, like the biblical text says. So I want to bring to your remembrance in the biblical text, about Jesus, the the parable, the allegory text where Jesus went on a fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And why am I telling you this? Because it correlates to different frequencies. It correlates to this so-called alpha male and alpha female. This so-called alpha male or female, in my opinion, don't really exist, but that's the term people use in physical reality, you know? It really is a person who's vibrating at their lower chakras, is what I'm saying here. It's really a person who's really unconscious. It's a person that may have mastered the physical reality, but never mastered self just yet. And so, being that they've mastered the physical reality, what I'm saying here is that they're vibing on low chakra pools of energy. So we have chakra pools of energy inside of us that correlate to different organs in our body. And it's oftentimes when our chakra pools of energy are not flowing properly in the physical reality, we will experience something called dis-ease and disharmony. And so in the lower chakra pools, the three chakra pools that are lowest is our root chakra, which has everything to do with survival. And then above that, it'll have it'll be our sexual energy or temptation. And then in our stomach, we'll call it the solar plex. So for those beings that are at their lower chakra pool of energy, or they may call themselves the, the alpha males or the alpha female per se. But let's talk about the alpha male first. The alpha male is vibrating at that frequency root chakra. And you'll see how, why he's vibrating there because this is a survival um, chakra and you understand that he's vibrating there simply because all he talks about is his money in the physical reality. That's his survival. You know, he got to get money, you know, money before the hose or whatever the little slang is, you know, 
And then the chakra above that is the temptation, like right? And you'll hear these these alpha males on different platforms and they'll say, Yeah, if I'm not getting no ace, you know, tonight by ten o'clock, I don't want to talk to her, so to speak, you know, kinda like they're into that <laughs> that sacral chakra pool of energy where they're wanting to kind of like you know go through women so to speak right right and then the power in will because you know they want to talk about all of the things that they've accomplished with their mind you know and so it is nothing wrong with this i'm not saying this is wrong i'm just letting you know where this particular being is vibrating at so they're in root chakra, they're in the sacral chakra, and they're in their solar plex. And this is the so-called alpha male, right? And let's go to this alpha female. Now this alpha female, she doesn't normally resonate in this particular, um, in her natural state of being in this particular frequency at her lower self. But sometimes some women get there because of not having let's go back to the root chakra, not having their father, you know, not having guidance per se. So they're always in survival mode being that they feel as though that they have to do everything themselves. And so because this woman is operating in her alpha uh, female energy, then that chakra, that sacral chakra, the, the chakra above the root is going to become out of balance in a sense, because now she is exuding masculine energy. She might not know it. She might be like, say for instance, maybe a corporate America type woman, and she probably dressed the par, and she's probably really, really, she has the look of the par, but her sacral chakra energy is not drawing men to her. You know how like dogs, you know, could go in heat, you know, and they'll, you'll see that male dog trying to jump that fence to try to get to the female per se, because her, that that sacral chakra or those um those uh pheromones so to speak energetically letting that male dog know that this is a time well when a when a woman is in her alpha female energy that sacral chakra is kind of off a of balance and she don't get kind of sniffed it out by men because men intuitively can sense this about women right and a woman she'll be all in her power in her will and she's so a so-called alpha female and she'll be like a boss at work and so when she get off from work she don't really know how to turn that thing off because she's always telling people no I need you to do this get me this right now you know order in the courtroom or wherever she works at whatever so alpha anything <laughs> male or female is just letting you know that these people are vibrating at a frequency that are using the lower level chakra pools of energy and if you think about it if you listen to the uh, radio our music vibrates on that same frequency too so you'll hear music that has to do with you know money sex and power all the time because our music is, a, is, is, is sending off that signal to keep the people to keep us in the physical reality at our lower self but then there's the so-called beta you know and they, 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 they be hard on the beta male but i would think if jesus if jesus was to come forth in the physical reality i would think jesus would be a beta male <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with being a beta male because the beta male or female per se knows how to use the higher level chakra pools of energy inside of them right and so this means that their heart chakra is open that you know that electromagnetic field of energy that can draw things and draw people to them right it is the most powerful form of energy right and these type of men per se that they they'll sit there and they'll tell a woman you know how they feel and, and there's a word i think they call it a simp my children they'd be talking about it a simp anyway so they'll call this particular beta male you know oh you a simp or whatever you know because you just you just being too loving so to speak you know you just kind of giving to so to speak your heart all the way open and so when you're operating in beta per se you're using that heart chakra not only are you using that heart chakra but your throat chakra your self-expression your ability to speak your truth because beta men would be able to tell a lady you know you know I, I love you you know I'll do anything for you right you know not only that the beta male is, 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 has a knowing for self, so that crown chakra is open too. So what I'm saying here is a beta male will be able to use the energy pools that are above <laughs> and the alpha is using that which is below. This is why I believe in the biblical text that the, that the 
Christ conscious one said, I am from above, you from below. <laughs> because it, it takes one to be able to go inside of self and to, and to know thyself in order to put down that the lower level and be able to kind of like tame it and walk into your higher chakra pools of energy. Because when you get to this place and you, knowing that your heart is the most powerful form of energy that there is, your heart chakra being open has enough energy to open up all chakra pools of energy inside of you. And so if in the physical reality, you have sickness and disease in one area of your body if you open up that heart in the spiritual realm on your physical in your physical you shall be made whole because love heals all this is what you're seeing in the biblical text but let's go to the biblical text and i want to show to you how the biblical text talks about this here this here lower level chakra energy and higher level chakra pools of energy. Remember in the biblical text when Jesus, he came off the mount and he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then they said, and then lo and behold, Jesus went, was in the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil. Devil to me, I don't look at a man with no pitchfork and no hell that you're going to. Hell is a state of being that you are in mentally when you have a helmet on your head and you refuse to open it up to wisdom, knowledge, order, and instruction, right? So with that being said, he was tempted by a lower level version of self, by the lower level chakras that was in him per se at once upon a time. And how was he tempted? Pay attention to the way that he was tempted. The first temptation by the devil, according to the biblical text, was when he said, I know you're hungry in so many words. If you're hungry, turn this stone into bread, right? So being that the Christ conscious one was hungry, the so-called lower energy devil in this parable was using bread or food, something that was kind of like synced to his survival or his root chakra to tempt him on, right? Remember that? He said, turn this stone into bread. And the Christ conscious one said, man should not live by bread alone. So basically that was him taming the root chakra saying, I don't have to live by bread alone, that you can't use this survival tactic on me because I've already risen to my higher self, right? The next temptation had to do with temptation. The next um, um, thing the devil threw to him had to do with temptation. When he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down in so many words, words. He was saying, throw yourself down. Wouldn't your angels lift you up? And so the Christ conscious one replied and said, thou shalt not tempt God because it had to do with the sacral chakra, which has everything to do with temptation. And then the next parable, he said something about, um, it had to do with this uh, solar plex when he said, I'm going to take you on a hill on this mount, so to speak, and I'll show you all the kingdoms that are below. And it, this could be all of yours if you bow down and worship me. See that power <laughs> that had everything to do with this, this power and will that's in the solar plex. That's the third uh, chakra that is below. And then the Christ conscious one said, no, 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 worship God and God only shall I serve. And at that part, the devil, so to speak, that lower energy, energy, I mean, energy being walked away from the Christ conscious one. So this was equivalent for Christ conscious one from rising to from the lower self to the higher self to the heart chakra to the throat chakra to the crown chakra rising above being from above and not below so we have people in the physical reality though that operate in the um, alpha male energy or the unconscious energy or the lower chakra energy and that is okay that is okay I'm not saying anything that is wrong with that but for everything in this physical reality, you're going to have two sides. Just like I talked to you all about this here, you're going to have that black and white. You're going to have that yin and yang. You're going to have that, that person that is vibrating at a low chakra. And then you're going to have people that vibrate at a high chakra. All is God experiencing itself. And all must be in balance. They're going to have some sleep people. They're going to have some woke people. You get what I'm saying here? So there's really nothing wrong with nobody is in their journey just know where you are and where you want to be and if you don't want to be at your lower self it's time for you to work on the higher level chakra pools of energy in order for you to rise to the christ conscious one that is inside of you that is inside of everyone in the physical reality that's all i'm saying and so and so when we deal with people in the physical reality whether male or female and i have two other videos that i need to post i've just been busy i'll post them after i get off this here live 
male, whether male or female, we go through stages of life. And if we just take it away from phys, um, from spiritual and go to the physical, you can better understand this because you understand that everybody that was born a female starts off as a little girl. And then that little girl, one day she evolves to be a woman, right? But then there's these different types of uh, female energies and we'll call them ladies. We'll call them goddesses, right? And so if you pay attention in physical reality, they are far in between ladies. You know, everybody could be a little girl. Everybody could be a woman. But something about those ladies though. And if you think about it here in the masculine energy, everybody that's born a male, they born a little boy. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of little boys in the physical reality. They have a whole bunch of men in the physical reality. But those gentlemen, or should I say those, those gods, they're far and in between. So what is it uniquely different about that lady and that gentleman? That lady and that gentleman already intuitively know that there's a yin and yang energy inside of them, okay? There's masculine and feminine energy inside of them. They just know when to put it to rest and when to let it rise. You see what I'm saying? Because really and truly, the totality of us is the lower level chakra plus the higher level chakra. The totality of God, the totality of the yin yang energy. And so all of this energy must come together to be in balance with oneself. All of this energy must be in balance to know thyself. And when you get to know thyself, then you ultimately have gotten to know God, the God within. So I wanted to explain that to y'all and post that on my YouTube channel. I don't want to look at these comments right quick because I've been running my mouth, but I just had to get that out. Let's see. Let's see. Hello. That's better. Okay. Okay. Hello, queen. Thank you. This is not their fault, but that is not her fault if she needs to do that to survive. No, I'm not saying there's nobody's fault. It's necessary. It's necessary. So you came equipped with everything inside of you that is necessary for you in your journey. Because some people go through trauma. Some people go through that trauma. But at the same time, life is about learning and winning. So if you have went through some type of trauma, you are your savior to yourself. So in order to keep on winning, in order to keep on evolving, you must save yourself from yourself. You must save yourself from your trauma. You must save yourself from expressing just one type of energy and getting to know the other side of that energy. So if you are on that side of the energy where you experience trauma, well, baby, it is up to you to get to the other side of that frequency where you experience well-being, you know, to get yourself in a harmonious state of being because you already experienced trauma. It's, it's time to heal now. If you were sick, okay, you already experienced sickness already. It's time to get well. And you know this to be true because every cell in your body wants to thrive and survive. Every organ in your body knows how to regrow and replenish itself. You, you, you could take certain things, you could cut your hair, it grows back. Your skin sheds all the time. Your stomach lining, every three days, you get a new stomach lining. Every so many weeks in, in, in months, you get liver, kidney, and so forth and so forth. And all of these things are turning over for you to help you produce more life and life more abundantly. But sometimes if we stay in that area of our journey where we are in this trauma, trauma is kind of like a low frequency, right? Sickness is at low frequency, right? Fear is at low frequency. So instead of you evolving, you're killing your cells because that's how the game of life goes. You're killing your cells. C-E-L-L-S is what I'm saying here. You're killing your cells. This is why in the biblical text is always talking about the renewing of the mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ's conscious one who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, so if you're going to start off in your journey with church and religion is a beautiful place to start. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But you can't be a soldier forever. Once upon a time in the story, you got to evolve from being just a soldier. Just like in the parable when Jesus was with the disciples, he said, I have to go. I have to go to prepare a place for you. I need you to be here and become fishers of men now. You can't just be following me. You got to become fishers of men now. Even with Job, Job, the one that, the, the, the one that pleased God, the righteous man. 
there was a stage of being where he, he lost everything that he had. He had to experience that other state of being. So we're just God experiencing the totality of God. And everything is perfect. And all is well. But you gotta, if you're on one side, you, you, it, you, it comes a season <laughs> that you must go unto the other side. Because just like the pendulum is swinging, there's a season, there's, there's a season for all things under the sun. A time to born, to be born, a time to die. Remember that in the biblical text? There's a season for everything. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what else here. It wasn't her fault. Hi, guys. Your energy is so magnetic. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you noticing. Hi, Miss B and So. You caught me. I, I don't even know if I even did invite. I just clicked on about five people and just hit the button. I didn't even put the um title of the video because I was five minutes late and I just press live and I just went. Let's see. Somebody just became a top viewer. Adjusting. Okay. Oh, Adjusting sent me a rose. Thank you. I don't know what that mean yet because I'm kind of new to the roses and stuff, but I like roses and I appreciate you. I thank you so much. Let's see. Thanks for tapping the screen. Oh, thank you, Miss B and so. Let's see. Ah. Oh, and somebody's sharing the live. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. The, hey, brown skin. How you doing? Hello. 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 Thank you all for joining. Thanks for joining. Let's see. How can I evolve mentally to get out of financial difficulty? Mentally, it all starts with the mental. It's okay. I happen to check my phone and I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Oh, love. You're welcome. Okay. So financially, mentally, by not thinking about the, the money, thinking about what it is you want to do with the money. Why do you want to be... Um, Financially secure, independent. What do you do? Now, I'll use me as an example, even though <laughs> that's not, I don't have a blockage there, but I'll use myself. Like if I have more money, I would say, or if I desire more money, I would say, okay, yeah, I would desire more money. And then I would ask myself, well, why? Why am I desiring more money? Well, I'm desiring more money because I really have this thing called a passion. And what I would do with that money is I would do retreats, you know. I would do retreats and I'll, I'll be able to bring other people in. And I could be able to teach people about healing. I could teach people about meditation. I could even do could even food, you know. It could be like, um, we could go hiking. I want to touch souls. I want to be able to meet, reach the masses, you know? And so, oh, that just feels so good to me. So with that thought process, I already know what I want to do. See, the money, how it's going to come is really none of your business. You have to know the what. So now I know in my mind and my mental, I know what I want to do. And so I'll milk the feeling in my human imagination. I'll milk that feeling of being there already. I'll tell myself before I go to bed during that drifting off when I go into another realm, I'll tell myself that I'm already there. I'll see myself speaking to those people and being able to heal those people and being able to help them with their mental clarity, with their health and wellness and their abundance and everything, every blockage in their life and being able to touch lives because I have this thing called a job, but it is not as rewarding as being able to touch somebody's soul because the soul lives on and oh, I find so much peace with that. And so I'll milk that feeling like I'm there already. I'll be able to be able to touch those people as if they were right there. I'll be able to hug those people as if they were right there. I'll be able to smell them. I'll be able to sit down in my bed while I'm eating some of that vegan food that I was going to say to them. It's almost like being a child within. You got to go there. You got to quantum jump there and to release the resistance of my right now reality in my physical reality to release that, release that resistance. So I, well, I do lives and I do help people. Well, I get emails every day about the people that I've touched lives. You know, the people that sign up to my newsletter, I'm helping people already. I'm really already there. That money that I want or the, the more abundance that I want is on its way because it's already in momentum. It's already flowing. I already have the desires of my heart already. I'm already complete. Money is really an illusion and I am really no thing. So at the same time, since I am no thing, I am everything. So I have everything that I already need. And I just go on and on with my mental talking to myself and I can even ask myself questions. How does speaking to the masses feel? 
What does it look like? And so when I ask myself a question, since my subconscious mind is hooked up into infinite intelligence, source, knowing all things, then I'll get an image. I'll get an image. My subconscious mind will give me an uh, image and show me what that financial security feels like. What it feels like to be able to touch the masses, lives, and hearts, and soul. Oh, it feels so good. And you just milk that and you already be in that state of being. So now you already know what it is you, you want. You already asked the question through thought. Now there is nothing to do. There is nothing to do. It is something to be. You have to be already abundant in that feeling. You got to walk already in that thinking as if you're thinking like that person that's already in that abundance. You have to ignore that physical reality because this here is an illusion. This is not real. This is my old thoughts that I used to think about on yesterday. This here new thought, this new thought that I'm creating today is going to be my tomorrow. And you got to know that. This is what now faith is all about. It is really about taking that, that, that blockage, that hindrance, that fear, that worry about not having it right now, forgetting about that. Jumping over that thing and going to what you have already in your human imagination. And this is how you draw things to you because you're lifting yourself mentally up. You remember in the biblical text, it said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all things to me. And so that's basically what you're doing. You're just drawing things to you mentally. It ain't no, 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 no working. We were taught that we had to go to school and we had to work hard and we had to show up and improve ourselves. No, no, no. When you can be still and know that you're God, <laughs> you do more work. You let the inner, the universe do the work for you instead of you doing that physical hard thing, like trying to find a way to make the money. No, 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 no. That ain't your business. Is the, the way the money gonna come to you you just stay in alignment with what it is that you want to be you just gotta be <laughs> yes took me a long time to figure that out babe let's see um thanks for uh sharing the live yes it's about having fun and creating that anticipation right right and not suffering because sometimes it'll take longer for us It'll be dragged out because we're suffering, because we're thinking about it. You know, like the person that maybe didn't get married just yet and all of their friends get, got married and they in their house and they crying. They don't want nobody to know, but they so sad and they feel so unworthy and they're suffering. And it's like, why me? Well, they're slowing. They, 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 they happily, so-called happily ever after down because they're suffering. And basically, the signal that they're sending out to the universe is give me more of this suffering. Show me somebody else who's going to get married before me. Show me more. Because that's the frequency that they vibrate on. And they do it unbeknownst to them. Just like somebody, a church lady came in one of my comments and she told me that I never heard... Um, I never heard... I was talking about the laws of the universe and how you should have, you know, know them and, lo and, and replace the word Lord for law, right? And fear the law. And she was like, well, I never heard of nobody um, crying out to the law. Okay, so, but the people who cried out to the so-called Lord aren't getting nothing anyway. Anyway, <laughs> they're not getting nothing anyway because they're on the frequency of crying out. I'm saying, oh God, why me? Of oh, please, 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 Jesus, do it for me. And really what they are saying is, Give me more, Jesus. I want to suffer a little bit longer, Jesus, because I'm crying. I'm begging and I'm sending out this signal to you that I'm suffering. And the, you, the blessings of God are just yay and amen. And it goes how you feel. So the, it's almost like you have this higher source of the universe that's looking down at you. That's saying, okay, how is he or she feeling right now? Oh, she's feeling like, like suffering. Okay, okay, okay. Come here. Come here. Give her more. That's what it's like. And so when you understand that, you should not be crying and begging to know Jesus, to know Buddha, nobody. I don't care who you believe in. But see that crying and begging stuff ain't getting you more of anything but crying and begging. And you're going to stay crying and begging. You might have a little, oops, yeah, I kind of got a little bit of half A's blessing along the way. But those big things that you really, really desire, it's going to seem like it's unattainable. Because you on a low frequency. You you at the lower shelf, like I was talking about in the beginning of the, vi the, um, the video. Of begging. Of fear. Survival mode. Root chakra. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to make it. 
Jesus, if you don't pay this bill, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, you got to step up. You got to step up. You got to increase the frequency and know that you already have whatever it is that you desire, that has already been created. You just got to tap into the frequency of it. You just got to jump over there mentally. And it is yours. And bam. So, so really and truly, and I said this in a previous video, a divine timing for your blessing is when you get on the frequency of what it is that you want. When you feel like you already have it, when you're carrying that thing with you in your heart every day. When nobody can't tell you that you don't already have this abundance. Like, what? Are you, what? I ain't a millionaire? What? I don't talk to the masses? What? I ain't married? What? I don't have a Tesla or whatever it is you want? What? Man, that stuff feels so real. And then you still ignore them and you just still walk into the knowing that it is yours already. Nobody don't know what you're thinking. So don't think about this as being crazy. But you got to get to a place where you don't even care about being called crazy. Because really, in the physical reality, the crazy people are really the conscious people. <laughs> yeah, things in the physical reality is really, really different from, you know, what it is. I'm sorry about that. Things are, are really, really different from what you might be seeing in, in, in the physical reality, you know. So what if people think you're crazy? Keep it to yourself. Nobody got to know what you're thinking anyway. Nobody got to know what's going on in your kingdom, in your subconscious mind, in the seat of your soul. You could wild out up in there. You could be like a child. You could come as a child with that imagination state of being. You could create anything you want up in here. And when you create it in here, you're creating it in the spiritual realm. And so everything starts off in the spiritual realm first before it manifests in the physical reality. So you got to start right here. In order for it to get right here. And you can't forget about it. You got to carry that thing with you. This is, this is how you play the game of life. And you, you'll see that you'll pass up other people. That's working hard. Yeah. And you'll feel good about that. You, you, all you have to do is sit down. Be still and know that I'm God. And I can draw things with me. I mean to me. Because they already are inside of me. Because life happens through me. When you figure that out, you figure out life. And life is so abundant. Oh, that felt good. Okay, yeah, it's about having fun. Yeah, I read that. I'm so happy you asked this question. I needed this as well. Yeah, oh, you talking to somebody else up in there? Oh, about the financial? Oh, gosh, that thing just jumps so fast. I really wish I could control that. If I can control that, somebody tell me. Yeah, speak on that stuff. Hey, Trey, how you doing? <sighs> I don't understand that pretty. Um, you live with a triple, triple goddess? Talk about it, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand that one. Oh my God, yes. I'm learning to check in frequency right now. How you feel, you know that I am in power. Yes, yes, so true. Yeah, thank you for being here. Hi, hi, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. You're welcome. That's beautiful. But yeah, I just really wanted to share that with you all because everything is perfect. And you know, a lot of people came in the comments and <laughs> and they, you know, wanted to talk about, you know, Jesus, you know, I have to call upon the Lord and this and another. And let me tell you, if that's where you are in your journey, call upon Jesus, call upon Lord. I'm not telling you to change. Be, be where you want to be, baby. It's your journey. You have all eternity. Just make sure it's working for you. But see, when I was in that place in my journey, you know, I, I just felt like something wasn't right. You know, I just felt just some type of dis-ease within myself. And I call this dis-ease my emotions, which is my internal GPS that was sending me an indicator that something wasn't resonating well with my soul. So this is my journey. And I'm not trying to project anything on anybody. I'm just trying to teach you the things that I know that are true to me and for me and you know and, and, and oftentimes I feel as though I can resonate with other melanated beings because oftentimes we've been through some of the same type of traumas some of the same type of stories oftentimes we vibing on the same frequency but yet there are some melanated beings in the physical reality that are deeply rooted into religion or deeply rooted into the lower level chakra and so at that point in their journey they're not really even open to other ideas of thoughts of consciousness right and the only way sometimes that these people become open is if when they're triggered 
per se. And sometimes my video is the thing that's going to trigger them. And when they trigger them, when I trigger them by saying something that is going against their uh, internal belief, you know, they want to leave a comment. And so I don't go back after these people and say, no, 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 it's just playing, dun, dun, dun. no, I'm not here to debate nobody. I let them speak and I give them a little heart and I keep it going, you know, because all is God and it's okay that you're there. I'm not here to judge nobody or to be judged. I'm just sharing my experiences and I'm sharing my experiences through the people that are my reflection because just like life happens through me, the people that I contact in my physical reality are, rever are versions of me and I call them my reflections. So it is no coincidence in the physical reality that my reflections come on my life and listen to me speak because they've been through similar things. They feel a similar feeling about something inside of them. There's some type of greatness that's inside of them. And when I call them God, even if they're in their walk of religion, if they're in their walk of religion and they kind of think it's a kind of like a little blasphemy of the Holy Ghost or wherever they are, they still sit there and watch me because intuitively they know through their subconscious mind, through their heart, through their yearning to want to know thyself, intuitively they know that there's something about the things that I'm saying that is really not trying to harm them. And I'm not trying to be the so-called devil that they're trying to say that I am. And this Masonic, um, the, the um, Masonic um, symbol, uh, what, 33 and all of this here, um, working for the devil kind of foolishness, they know that I don't vibe on that frequency. So they still watch. And they still come back and they still, even in their anger, they will comment and then the comment to bring them back to me again, because now I'm on their feed and now they're going to hear me, my voice again. And so really it's just activating people. That's how this thing called life goes. That's how this thing called the law of uh, attraction goes. <laughs> so I, I smile at it and keep going because he, I'm just here to deliver the message. I'm not here for the likes. I'm not here for nobody to really follow me per se. No, 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 no. Just like the Christ conscious one said, no, 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 no. I'm making you fishers of men. No, 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 no. Don't you follow me. No, no, no. I'm an introvert. No, no, no. I, I, I don't like all of the traffic. No, no, no. I want you to go inside of you. I want to give you the tool to go inside of you and realize that you are God. Woo. That was beautiful. Okay. You're welcome, baby. You're welcome. Yes, yes, yes. What are we talking about? I'm late. Well, we were talking about uh, alpha male and alpha female energies and vibrating on different frequencies and breaking it down that the alpha, um, ooh, them comments jumped again, that the alpha a female or male is vibrating at the low chakra pools of energy and the beta per se is at higher chakra pools of energy from their heart, their throat, their, their um, Christ consciousness. They're just two beings. One is conscious and one is unconscious. Glad I caught you. Yeah, hey, Keish. I'm sorry, I didn't send the e invite and I was five minutes late. I love that you share that with us. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's really necessary, and especially when you see a bunch of people debating. And I know I'm not going to be able to stop them from debating, per se, but at least to stimulate thought, because that, that's the key to it all. Once you stimulate that thought, that subconscious mind is that thought, you know, Thought creates other thoughts, and then you're going on a journey and and <laughs> down that so-called rabbit hole because thought is feminine energy and it gives life to other thoughts. And it'll it'll be the thing that'll help you to evolve or quicken you to awaken. You know, in the biblical text is that they shall not all sleep, but they all shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye. You know, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Oh, I wish I had my head set to listen. Where I'm at. Oh, you don't have your head says Paul. Oh, hey, Paul. I remember you. Hey, babe. I just talked to you. On, well, commented with you, uh, what, yesterday? The day before yesterday, too? I'm so glad you came, too, babe. Be easy with yourself, Paul. I'm going to be watching you. Quiet the mind and steal the body. Yeah, it has been very helpful. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad that is my messages help. I'm glad I'm grateful that I come across your page. Who is that? Shane? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad you came across the um, page too. And I feel so thankful that I'm in a position to be able to help other people with my story because I know my story not going to be like your story, 
but there's parts of my story that can help you with yours. And that's what I'm here for, you know, and even per going back to the feminine and, and, and masculine energies, you know, there was a moment in my life that I was exuding a lot, a lot of masculine energy. You know, you, you go through those places, those dark places per se, but you got to realize that there's light at the end of that tunnel. And so for that time in, in my life, it was because, yeah, I had some issues at that time in my life, little girl issues, you know? And so for that, that so-called alpha female that exists in the physical reality, I could understand her. I totally can understand her because sometimes you, you, you so into survival mode and just so into trying to make it and, and so into, you know, trying to achieve things in the physical reality and nobody really never told you or maybe they told you you just un never understood about going within never really understood about this thing called forgiveness you even won't be um just just walked over you know because in the biblical text it could be if you're a babe in christ it could be kind of confusing like you know when they're talking about things like turn the other cheek and in and, and all is god and in God sent his only begotten son. If you don't really know what you're talking about and can break down that parable, you think it's telling you to just get walked over. Just here. He'll just take my life. I lay my life down and here you just take it and I'm just going to be the rug and you just going to walk all over me. But when you really, really get it and really, really figure that thing out, it's empowering. It, when you really get it and heal you from your traumas per se, it's so empowering. It's so empowering at that point when you get it. But a lot of people don't, 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 you know, don't look at the biblical text like I do. But I like to rightly provide, um, apply that biblical text to my life. And I think it would be helpful for each and every one of us to do that. <laughs> line upon line, precept upon precept, just like it said. And, you, and find what resonates with you and, and where you are in your journey. Because it's a story about different stages of where we all are. When we started off as an atom, Adam in Genesis, all the way to we, when we become the Christ conscious one, Jesus Christ, whatever you, the, the, the anointed one, whatever you call him, the rabbi, whatever you call him, he's talking about you though. Let's see. This has been very helpful. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that, babe. That I think I'm going to be booking with you soon. What to expect? <laughs> oh, that you are. I knew you were. That's um Kalo. Yeah, Kilo. I I knew you were. I sensed that you were. Yeah. It's as far as um your journey is concerned, that, that so called trauma or whatever you call it, this is our past life. We've all been through it and so being that you're my reflection, I know that I'll be able to help you, you know, let that be, you know. Let that be, you know, it, it's, you got to let it flow through you. You have to get to a moment where you could rewrite the story and be done with that story. And every time you say that story, you're saying it with a happily ever after ending that it worked out for you good in order for you to excel in your journey, because that's really what it's all about. You know, we get hung up sometimes on our story. We get hung up sometimes upon being the so-called alpha. We get hung up... Um, on being sick sometime we think that's the end of the story but the story never over until you mentally say that it is over and so a lot of us don't want it to be over but don't know how to get to the other side and i know that i'll be able to help you just like i've helped many get to the other side and spread them wings and, and, and evolve in a journey and that's really what it's all about and so it's heartfelt for me because when i help you i help the collective consciousness because when i help you your frequency increases and and so that's going to inspire somebody else it's almost like we're all just little pieces in this little domino game and so one trickles the other to fall over and increase their frequency and so forth and so on because at the end of the day, we are not these beings in the physical reality. We're just energy, frequency, and vibration. And so just we just try to vibe a little bit higher. That's all we're doing here. Come on now. Hey, precious. Thank you for joining. Fireman, are you in Louisiana? Yeah, I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana. I sure am. No love. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Thank you. No problem, baby. Higher consciousness is separate from a personality type. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really uh, your subconscious. It's, 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 it's not about the physical, it's about your, your mind, really. 
is about your frequency really where you vibe in it it's about your soul essence what is not the physical <laughs> it's not like people think so it's not going to be a look it's going to be the feeling of you when you walk in the room it's not going to be the the the, the words it's going to be the frequency of that voice that it is attuned to because a lot of people be telling me where you're from and or well, something about your voice and you should do voiceovers and, and this and that and other. But it's about the frequency of the voice. It ain't about me being from no New Orleans. Mm -mm. It ain't nothing to do with that there. It's the frequency. It's my gift. It, it's my gift. And so my, you know how they say, the gift make room for you. And so when I, even when I'm in meetings at work sometime in the, mm -hmm. in the corporate America arena, it's like, I say something. I say something and um, it's like everybody can turn around and, and just look at me when I open up my mouth. And I know why that is. It's because that's the gift that I come to bring. You know, I know that what my calling is and has been, I have been known since I was a little girl. So I just been running away from it, but I'm here now. <laughs> oh, I was a runner. Do you smoke? No. Love your face. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a different kind of compliment. I love your face. Okay. What's your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is in my profile, Salt of the Earth Publishing. I'll be posting this video and I have to post my last week's video too. Yes, I am God. Yes, all is God experiencing itself. All is God, everyone. We just vibrating at different frequencies. All of us. Some people are vibrating low now, but guess what? You can't have a low without the high. Because God is everything in between. Just like some people say, you know, the devil and God. You can't have God without the so-called devil. Because it's just it's just the same energies at different ends of the spectrum, per se. So all is God. All. You put it all together and it's just God. Just like this here. The separate the separation of the two, but if you put it together, all is God. It is all tapped into infinite intelligence or source or the universe or the super conscious, whatever you want to call it. All is God. All of it. But there's an illusion of separation in the physical reality. And it is so important. And this all started um, talking about the alpha and male and female because I wouldn't really be talking about that but this all started when I was talking about the laws the law of gender being one of them saying that there must be male and there must be female principles in this particular matrix because that's how we set it up to be that's how we set up this game to go so understand what's going on in the game it's funny how the humans in the physical reality can play a game you know on a you know playstation or whatever device they use and they'll pick their avatar just like you picked your your body your physical your look they'll pick the scenery in the game just like you picked the scenery in your physical reality you pick the little car and everything but you don't you don't want to accept the fact that all of this is you that you're playing this game in the matrix and it is happening through you. You have the controller in your hand. You be wanting to know the cheat codes. And when you want to know the cheat codes, you run into somebody like me that can give you the cheat codes. But you have to apply the cheat codes to your game. And so you, you, you probably wasn't getting that many cheat codes when you was in religion. So now you stumbled on somebody that knows like laws and spiritual laws and that can help you with cheat codes. Now it's up to you to apply those cheat codes use them to get to the next level in your journey it's up to you I, I i could only give you the cheat code i can't make you put them in the computer or on your joystick or however that thing go i can only give them to you and you can only use them when you're ready right now it might not be the season for you to to use no cheat codes you might just be looking at me wondering if i'm crazy but that's okay because guess what it's still going in your subconscious mind your subconscious mind lives on and on and never forgets anything so when you're ready you're going to remember that little lady that had the little pink shirt on the little pink tank top and she had the little braids in her hair and it's going to come forth to you clear as day and you're going to be like oh she was trying to give me the cheat code Man, I wish I would have knew. <laughs> That's how that thing go. Trust me, it didn't happen to me too. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to be booking soon. Come on now. Yeah, Louisiana. Wow. No, you're not crazy. Yeah, some people think I am, but I know I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Thank you for that comment. 57. 
You got to go through to get to. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you do. You got to go through some things. So, yeah, I've been through a lot of things to get to this place. I've been to a place where I was um, crying out, you know, you know, just with from religion to spirituality. And even I remember like it was yesterday, I was trying to say my prayers, you know, and I was like, God, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, whoever out there. You know, because I was so confused. I didn't know, you know, who to call on, what to call on. I was like, look, I know that I feel something that is greater than me. And I just want to get to know myself. Teach me how to know myself. Teach me how to figure out the kingdom of God that is within me. Whatever your name is. You know? And so from there, like when you ask, you shall receive. When you ask that subconscious mind something, because it knows all things, it shall be given unto you. But you got to ask the question, going back to what I was just saying, you got to be ready to put in them cheat codes. You got to be ready for this. You can't, you, you, you're not going to just stumble upon it. Mm -mm. You got to ask the question and be ready to receive it. Yeah. Yeah. How you nourish your body. Yeah, definitely. You have a beautiful soul. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, I was there too. I didn't know how to pray or who to pray to. Yes, you get to a point and then you so, so then even, even when you get to the point of universe per se, when you're thinking about the universe, you're praying to the universe and then you start, you start kind of like looking at the universe just like you did as God for a moment there. Because, you, you know, if God will say in religion, if God doesn't do anything else for me he's done enough now god is a he now in that in in in, in that in a phrase and so if he meaning he is separate from you doesn't do anything else for me because i'm different from god you see how we outsource your god then he has done enough now, first of all, you're putting God as if he is the man. The biblical text says God is not a man in the book of Numbers. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. <laughs> so he, first of all, is not the totality of God. God is not a he. God is an it, a source, the most powerful form of energy that there is, right? But you're separating it by saying that he is outside of you and that he's not going to do nothing else for you. And it's okay because he's done enough. And that's the same thing we'll do with the universal talk when we get first into spirituality. We'll begin to say, well, if the universe allows, you know, now it is it. You didn't change it from a he to a it. But if, if the universe allows, I'm going to just give it to the universe and what shall be, shall be. But then it's another pivotal point in your journey when you got to realize, wait, hold on, what is this universe thing? thing that I'm talking to like I didn't move from him to it but all of these things are outside of me I thought the kingdom of God was inside of me and so then you get to that pivotal moment where you realize wait hold up the universe is merely my subconscious mind so yeah 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 God was inside of me all the time it was my subconscious mind it was my thoughts this is why Jesus was saying let this mind be in you this is why it was because of the renewing of renewing of the mind because it's right here is my subconscious mind that is connected to the superconscious mind, which is the source, the, the all knowing, the infinite intelligence, that divine frequency. Oh, it's right here. Okay, now I get it. Now I know what to so-called pray to. But when I'm praying now, now I'm attuning myself to the frequency of the things that I'm wanting. I'm no longer begging and, 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 and asking and crying in that low frequency. I'm no longer putting my bills up in the Bible and say, oh, Jesus, I need you to pay this bill right here. No, 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 no. I see it already done. I count it already joy. I can look at the biblical text and I, and I now understand all of the things that they were saying to me. They were telling me, finally, my brother. Whatsoever things that are of love, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that have a good report, think on these things. Now I know why the biblical text was telling me these things. It was telling me these things so that I could be on the frequency to allow these things to come to me and through me so that I can be that thing. So it can flow and come into my physical reality. Oh, I got it. So now I know how to pray. Now I know how to go to source energy <laughs> as a little child. And pray, get everything that I want to come forward in the physical reality. And now that I know the truth, and the truth shall set me free. Oh, that feels so good. Let's see, facts, because God was was a he woman. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, he wouldn't exist. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. How you need your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, no, I don't really um, pray. Pray like religion prayer. I mostly give gratitude in my mind. Just say thankful. Say what I'm thankful for in my mind. And I quantum jump to the things that I want. And I I acknowledge everything energetically in the physical reality. Like are it birds, you know? Like if I see a bird, hello, you're me. I, I, I reverence the divine in you. Hello, you're my favorite. I speak to everything. I acknowledge everything. I love everything. I see everything to, through the eyes of God is what I'm saying. In my inner voice. I don't say this outside, but if I wasn't here on this, this year live, and if I were outside and I'm just walking and I see people in my inner voice, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I'm so thankful for you. I see the God in you. You're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. I'm thankful for this day. I'm thankful for this win. Hello. And if I hear a bird or see a bird or squirrel, if I'm at the park, hello. How are you? I see you, God. Because everything is God just vibrating at different frequencies. So this is my so-called prayer. You know how they say in the in um in church they used to say, when praises go up, blessings come down. Well, I'm being thankful for everything that I see in my physical reality. That's my praise. I'm praising what I see. I'm being thankful for what I have right now. And it's, I don't do that in Jesus' name because when you get to a certain point in your journey, you are the Christ conscious one. So if anything is in your name, <laughs> if anything, it's you. It's you having that thought and making it come forth. It's you. You're with God. You're the gift and the giver. It's you. So you need to be thankful for the things that you see that you already have created in your physical reality is what I'm saying. Because it all came through you. What you see came through here. You thought it up first in order for you to see it. Your life right now, it might not be as perfect as you would like it to be for your future desires, but you thought it up. You thought up. Even if it's shitty, you thought up your right now. So you have to be thankful for it in order to receive more for your future is what I'm saying here. So no, I don't break. I quantum jump and I'm thankful. That's about all I do. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we all are a little bit. <laughs> like your guy. You got good. We all a little bit of crazy. That's what you was trying to say up there. Let's see. Um, I'm having problems saying in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you think that's your internal GPS that's telling you that you have an issue with that, and I will follow your heart. That's unk. I would follow your heart. And so find a way where you can meditate and still be thankful. You ain't got to say it nobody name. You, the name ain't important. You know, because all of that name stuff, that, that's man with the name. You know, Yahshua, Jesus, Buddha, Christian. All of that, that stuff, that's that's man, you know. That, that's man making all of that up. Find find how you want to give your praises and your thing, um, thanksgiving to source energy on your own. So to find the name that you want to call it, whether you want to call it source, infinite intelligence, God Almighty. That's all. That's a personal relationship, and only you can define that. And I'm not going to tell you what to do with that, because you intuitively already know what to call it, what to what to do with it, and how to think it, because it's gonna feel good to you. And what it feels good to you, ding 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 ding, do that. That's like that's that's what your emotions are telling you. Ding, ding, when you feel good about it, oh, yeah, 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 I got to do that. That's what I got to do. Because you already have the answers. You've already done this before, actually. I've already, I've always prayed that way. God is everything and everywhere at all times. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh-oh. I didn't hear the button. I don't know what I did, y'all. Oh, there it go. <laughs> Thank God for you. Thank God for you, too, BS, BLS259. Thank God for you. You're my reflection. You really are an amazing TE3. Thank you. I don't know what the TE3 means. Is that a slang for something? 
Y'all know what? Let me tell you something about college people. College people ain't into all of the little slang. If that's a little slang, we slow in that area. Like, we, I don't watch TV. I don't listen to, like, rap and all of that. So I have children that got to teach me about, you know, the little slang stuff. So I'm green, if that's still the word that people use when it comes to that kind of stuff. I don't know. So, so don't get too fancy on me. <laughs> How do you open up your heart chakra? You open up, open up your heart chakra by knowing that you are lovable, you that you are love, and that love flows through you, and to you. You open up your heart chakra by seeing other people through not through the eyes of God, which is seeing them through love. Just like I was talking about, when I see those people and I say hi to them, I see them in love. They could be ugly people, they could be fat people per se, you know, but I'm not judging those people. I'm seeing the beauty in those people, you know? And so when you see good in all, that's what Christ conscious, when he was, he was seeing everybody healed already, you know, that's how you see people through your heart, you know? And so your heart is open. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you have to, you know, give all your money to the church per se, or, or, you know, or, um, give all your time, your energy to anything. You just got to be it. You got to be come love. You got to be it with your thought. You got to be it with your action. You got to be. You got to learn how not to do, do, do and be it. You got to be it with your thoughts. Like when you think about somebody, you could think about them and say that, that they're perfect. And I know, and you could think the positive thought about them, that I know that they love me. And I know that I love them. And I know that, that their body is healing and I see them well and I see them in abundance. It's opening up your heart. And you know, another thing too, as a feminine energy being, what really helped me with opening up my heart is when I started saying the word, I feel more, you know, cause going back to, um, men and women, you know, men are about doing, doing, doing physical, right? So they, um, communicate by like if they guy friends like two men talking together like say what's up bro and the other guy friend would be like yeah man i was about to take a ride and do da 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 and man i'm about to do da 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 it's about doing but when you get into your feminine energy women are more about their feelings right emotions like right and so it for me opening up my heart had everything to do with me saying or expressing now how I feel instead of what I was doing because the doing was more of the masculine energy anyway. It's about how I'm feeling. And so what I would do to practice is I would like, you know, talk to different men and if they would ask me what I was doing, I would say automatically how I was feeling. And I like if they call me at night and I'm at home just relaxing and they're like, Hey, B, how you doing? Or what you doing? I'd be like, oh, I feel so comfortable right now. I'm laying down in my bed and these sheets feel so cozy or whatever like that. But I'm constantly using the word feel. I feel so excited to hear your voice. Yeah, yeah. It really feels good after a long day at work just to hear the, the you know, the masculine voice in my ears or you know it's almost kind of like being seductive in a sense but you're constantly saying you feel because what you feel is coming what you're feeling is coming from your heart and you're actually doing something with him that his boys can't do with him you are letting him feel you you're letting him feel your heart feel your feminine energy feel your electromagnetic form of energy reaching him because he'll be like oh yeah <laughs> so you know it, it start to speak your truth from your heart and use the word i feel and if you're a guy you can use that in a masculine way too and that ain't gonna make you soft or simple whatever the word is for that there um you could use how you feel around your partner you know around your children man, I feel so proud of you, you know, to talk to your son, you know, babe, I feel so lucky to have you, man, you know, you, 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 you know, I'm thankful to have the feminine energy in my presence. People want to know what's going on up in here. So in order to get this thing rolling, you got to express what's going on in here. And the language this thing here feels, 
I mean, it understands it's feeling. Feeling. So remember that. And that'll help you keep your heart open. I feel overwhelmed. I feel sleepy. I feel happy. But the thing about opening up this here heart, a lot of people, you know, if they had low frequency, when they open up this here heart, they want to talk about all the low stuff. I feel like I ain't never going to win. Root chakra stuff, you know. Or I feel like I ain't going to never get laid or some crazy lower chakra stuff. No, 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 no. Balance it out and make sure what you're saying that you're feeling, you have more positive or higher chakra feelings than the low. Because a woman or a man don't want to hear you complaining all the time in low chakra feeling. When you open up this heart, try to go high with it. You know, speaking your truth, coming from, you know, the place of love. You know, nobody don't want to hear complaining like, you know, oh, I feel sick again. I feel like I'm getting a headache. I feel like you cheating on me or some crazy stuff. No, feel some good things. <laughs> feel good on purpose. Yes. Let's see. Air feels. Can you please tell me how to air feels? What does that mean? How to open up the crown chakra? I don't know what air what that meant air feel thingy but to open up the crown chakra it's really seeking truth and knowledge it's really like being on this live talking to somebody that's on that frequency already because like i said when you're attuned to that frequency you help other people so i help other people attuned to that frequency because my energy has enough power to quicken other people's energy. So this, this is one positive thing. Reading more about, you know, spirituality. And really your diet too plays a good part, I'd say, in the beginning. Because that's how I stumbled upon it. Because I was just on a journey when I wasn't feeling too well, too well of changing my diet. And I changed it to, you know, a vegan diet. I just threw away everything in the kitchen, all of the food, you know, the meats, everything in the cabinet. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna do this here no more. Cause it gotta be something about what I'm eating. Cause I knew that when I went to the doctor, you know, for the common cold, for, you know, stomach ache, ear to bowel syndromes and stuff like that, you know, that was going on with me. The doctor ain't never asked me what I was eating, you know? And I was like, wait, there gotta be something more to this here. Every time I go to the doctor, he want to put me on, you know, some kind of different, different medication or ask me, you know, what's going on at work and in my stress and this and that and the third. Uh -uh, I ain't gonna be nobody lab rat. I ain't gonna be keep on taking these different kind of medications and I don't even know what this little pill doing to me. Uh-uh. And that was actually the last thing I said to this doctor that I went the last time that I went for a, you know, when I was complaining about something, I was like, look, I ain't gonna be your lab rat lady. <laughs> I mean, I don't know you like that and I know you don't know me like that here, but I ain't nobody lab rat. I ain't trying nothing else that you say. Uh, and she was like, well, what are you gonna do? How are you, what are you gonna do, Miss Rie? And I was like, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do, but I ain't doing what you say. <laughs> <laughs> and I got up out of there and I never went back to her. But I go to my wellness visits and I have no medical issues at all. But I, what I did that day, though, was when I came home and I got rid of all of that um, meat that I was eating. You know, all of the cereal and the milk and all of the chips and cold drinks and, and all of that there. I threw it all away. And what I began to notice after I started, you know, eating vegan and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just going behind the nasty stuff, to be honest with you. I was going behind the kale because I hated kale. Kale tasted like a little rubber tire to me. But I was like, look, give me the kale, you know, yeah, I'm going to eat all, all of this here. And I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> I'm gonna just try different things that's green. Give me, give me some of this squash, you know, give me, give me eggplant. Yep, I'ma try it. I didn't know what it was, but I bought it home and I tried to do different things and I never forget my baby boy. I was like, mom, what are you doing to us? I just wanna eat nuggets. What is this, mom? Please, just let me eat some nuggets. I was like, no, we gonna figure this out. And so I got to a point in my journey where I would have them in the kitchen with me and we were just trying to fix stuff that tastes good and didn't taste like cardboard. And we just eventually figured it out. But this is the thing that happened though. In figuring that out and in cleaning my diet, one day I'll never forget, I was in this really technical meeting and I'm sitting there and it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm listening, I'm understanding, 
I'm obtaining this information. Cause you know, I was like, it was like a light switch that had went off because you know how you can get in a zone and your attention span ain't that no more. You know how you get to the place in your journey where you got to read a paragraph. I was here. You got to read a paragraph like, you know, two times to understand what the, what, what the hell is this paragraph talking about? Like, let me read this thing again. What? You know, I was there. It was like a cloud was over my head, but weeks after be cleaning up my diet, it was like a light went off and I was like, okay, okay. I had so much mental clarity, so much of strength. And then I became, um, like a, a seeker of knowledge and I wanted to read. I had just graduated from college and I wanted to read, you know, I had used to, was doing papers or whatever, which took me a long time to do when I was in college, constantly reading stuff over and over. But now that I had this mental clarity about myself, I was like, I would have a thought. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do some research on that, you know? And I just stumbled upon consciousness that way. Cause then I went down a rabbit hole and I started to do research on, you know, consciousness, spirituality, being a vegan, you know, cleaning up your diet. And, and then the, um, hieroglyphics, you know, the pharaohs and the goddesses. And, and then I wanted to read about Thoth. And then I wanted to read, cause I had already read the Bible cause I was in church and I had already read the Bible about 30 some times, but I wanted to read the dead sea strolls. You know, I wanted to read about hoodoo and voodoo. And I wanted to know everything about religion and, and spirituality that I possibly could. And it was just me wanting, wanting, asking. And here I am now. <laughs> I am now. Okay, let me see what time it is. Oh, I'm 20 minutes old, but I gotta wrap this up. Thank you so much. This is me now. Yeah, I see you, bro. I see you. Yeah, you feed the brain. Definitely, because it was almost like it was hungry. It became hungry. Wow, I never thought about it that way, Miss B. And so you are so right about that. It became hungry, you know, after I cleaned up my diet. I guess because of that mucus and all that, you know, the them toxins, so to speak, in the physical reality that I probably was knowing at it. Once I cleared that up, it really became hungry. I never thought about that yet. I mean, like that, yeah. But you know, like I know about health and wellness. And so now I'm thinking, you know, how we have gut feelings. Wow, that's profound. We have gut feelings per se, because our stomach and our brain are intertwined. That's something else I researched. <laughs> Our stomach and our brain are intertwined. This is why we have gut feelings. And being that I was cleaning up my gut, then my brain was really feeling hungry. Woohoo! I just learned something. Yeah, that's beautiful. Hi, I'm, I move well. I move well, if I'm saying that right. Hey, you. Thank you for your support on my page. You always comment. I appreciate that. Plant-based is healing. Yes, it really is. Yes, it is. Yep. It is scoop. It is brown sugar. Exactly. I'm changing my eating habits right now. Yeah. And if I was to say, I want to share this here while I got on the eating thing. In the beginning, going vegan, I lost a whole lot of weight because, you know, the meat, you know, was taking up a lot. So I lost weight fast and I got really, really skinny. But in hindsight, I wish I knew this. So I would tell this to anybody that's going on a vegan journey make sure you get your amino acids in lieu of not getting that protein no more find a way to get your amino acids and the easy way to get that is by consuming some extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil then you're going to need some minerals inside of your body so you need to take away that white salt and get you some pink himalaya sea salt that have 80 plus minerals for your body I think those are two very important things that I wish I would have known in the beginning and I wouldn't have just lost so much weight so drastically by getting rid of the, um, you know, the heavy meats. And you're going to get hungry. You're going to get hungry. But I want to let you know this is another thing that I learned about going vegan. I done started talking a whole nother subject. I'm sorry. I'm about to wrap this up. But this is another thing that I know. So when you, when you were eating all the meat, you stretched your stomach really, really, you know, far, right? But your stomach, it has memory. And so it'll remember how to contract back to, you know, its regular size. But because it has been stretched with all that meat and stuff that we did from our old diet, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be hungry. <laughs> I'm telling you. But there's going to be a moment that you're going to get over that hurdle and not going to be as hungry 
anymore, but you got to press through them thoughts. It's like, it's like a renewing of the mind with this here too. You got to press through them thoughts. You got to have vegan snacks available for you. You got to drink a lot of water. You got to have some type of fruit or something to, to munch on. You got to trick your, your brain into thinking that you're eating by chewing some nuts, some fruits, some herbs or something all the time until the hunger pains go away. Cause that's the biggest challenge. And if you're going to take out something, like if you start, I did cold turkey, but everybody ain't in that place. But if you start on your vegan journey, I would suggest that you take away maybe some of the meat and then add a substitute that is healthy. Like to maybe take away pork chops, but teach yourself how to make um, vegan burgers or something like that. Take away, you know, your, 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 your um, dairy, but teach yourself how to make maybe vegan smoothies. So for what you're taking away, add to in a healthier way. And that way you won't feel as if everything is being taken away from you. Cause I did everything. Cause I was like, look, I don't want to do this no more. Something ain't right. But everybody not like me. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Bev, baby doll. Yes, I did. This is what I'm craving right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We all are. Collectively, we all are. Uh-oh, I done hit something. I be hitting buttons that I don't think. Yeah. Yes, I'm seeking books to read now. Do you know a good one? I know a lot. A lot of good ones. Um... In the beginning, all of mine was like uh, the spirit, spiritual books. Um, I would say I would start off with like alchemy books. So learning about um, laws of like alchemy for dummies. I read that one. Learning about the uh, laws of the universe. You don't even need a book for that. You could Google those. Um, it depends upon what, what you're trying to uh, seek in your right now moment. But for me, I I felt, I feel like it all was an aha moment when I learned about the laws. You know, even though reading about religion, religion taught me that I was God. But then when the laws came into play, I knew how to manipulate energy and kind of act and, you know, control the powers inside of me and kind of outside of me is what I'm saying here. So alchemy, alchemy for dummies, um, <laughs> even there was this really good book, this really good book. It might sound like the devil to y'all, but conjuring up witches, it taught, it taught a lot about different energies and different realms is what I'm saying. You ain't got to conjure up nobody if you, you know, not in that place in your journey, but I did it all, like I said, and I'm not ashamed of it, but it taught about different realms of beings you know and so and it kind of took away from me coming out of religion it took away the fear of that unknown and then one of easy read that i always keep with me all my other books is in the closet is the, um the four agreements this is a, a my favorite go-to because it it teaches you how to like speak impeccably you know how um and this is short read well to me, it is 187 um, pages. It teaches how not to take anything personally and don't make assumptions. It kind of teaches you how to see through the eyes of God. So this would be a good, it's on Amazon too. This would be a good uh, first read, teaching you how to look at um, things through the eyes of God and be impeccable with your words because your words are casting kind of like spells and, and they are two-edged sword like the um, biblical text talks about. And um, always do, always do your best, you know, being easy with yourself. So that's a good one. I'm glad that's what's sitting here on this here um, desk. That's a good one. I will start with. I learned a lot from that one. Kind of aha moments of my right now reality. And I like those kind of books that can break things down to me. Just like the Bible, how I like to break down the biblical text. I break it down to me. To meet me right here, right now, in my physical reality. Don't tell me nothing about no um, dry bones. Oh, Ezekiel, you know, speaking to these dry bones. Thus said the Lord God, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. So in my religious walk, you know, they, they used to talk about that. And I'm like, what? 
What that mean, dry bones? Why is God speaking to dead people? But in my right now reality, when I think about parables like that, I'm like, oh, okay. That's when a person is asleep. And it's just, that's when a person is like not conscious. And so I will be, breathe breath or life breath the breath of life into him and he shall live right and so he shall become a conscious one you know because when we're sleeping we are our lower self is like we are dead so to speak in christ dead in ourselves so to speak and so i like to apply and flip everything to right now help me right now <laughs> i won't i don't want to talk in no parables break it down to me so i can apply it great read yeah oh you read that one before oh mr conscious Kirk is here hey babe how are you thank you for joining yeah a goddess thanks thanks i've been on here really long and i'm over my time but hey i'm trying to learn the laws yeah yeah just google them and, and read them they're really easy to to know and then when you kind of know the truth you could you could apply it to your reality and you you won't be repeating the same cycle over and over again you won't be rinsing and repeating you know you understand the law of attraction and you'll understand that Oh, I have to get on the frequency of this thing. You understand how you're responding to different things. You know, you understand the law of assumption that you, that you can you can assume things to be already. It's just really just like having the right now kind of uh, faith. You could understand, you know, cause and effect. That you know, there's a cause into everything. I mean, there's effect to everything based upon that cause. You know, and it just really just helps you. And it's almost like your little cheat code through life. You know, we don't have to be long suffering. You know, we don't we don't have to be soldiers all the time. Everything don't have to be so hard. You know, if you know the laws, there are a lot of good meat substitutions out now at grocery stores, Target, and even Walmart. Yeah, yeah, they are the one. Um, there's um some tofu type things, substitutes that I kind of like. Don't like so to speak, where I'm not fine of, so to speak, because um, I don't really care for the tofu, but yeah, but you could make your own like meats if you know how to cook regular soul food, you could make anything. It's really about putting herbs and your herbs, your flavor and season together, but your meat substitute, if you're going vegan, will most often be mushrooms. You know, mushrooms, you could throw in some oats up in there as fillers and some herbs and some, maybe if you eat carrots, I don't really like carrots, but if you eat carrots, sometimes carrots and celery, they'll put inside of that. But yeah, the mushrooms have a texture or consistency of like chicken. This is why like a, a portobello mushroom, you could fry it and season it, put a batter on it. And if you know how to season chicken, Oh, that'd be your go-to. So if you're starting, try some portobello mushrooms and put some um some egg substitution. I use flaxseed meal as the egg substitution to put on it, and then some um some um flour and um season up like some fried chicken. Those things good. Oh, that's good. Make me want some portobello mushrooms right now. Okay, I'm about to wrap this here up. There are a lot of good substitutes. I wanted to just try fish and shrimp. It's, uh, yeah, but fish and shrimp, for me, I don't really fool with that. You know, they say, um, you know, there's different levels, just like different levels of consciousness, you know. Mm. Not to say that I have not, but mm, you still have eyeballs, you know. You still have eyeballs. But you get to a point of your journey, and I'll tell you this before I wrap it up. You get to a point of your journey where you have cleansed your body, you have become conscious, and then we're at the next point in the journey where we have the new testament you know because the old testament told you the fools that left to be left alone so but when you got into the new testament and you became the christ conscious one jesus was saying bless your food because then you realize that that the food <laughs> it really wasn't so much the food it was the thinking that we have when we're eating the food so there's another level because you're always a student now so so but go down a level just like we went down religion and then we stumbled upon spirituality and consciousness in the universe and then we realized the universe was our subconscious mind even with eating we eat all of the hog and all this here and we think oh okay this stuff is killing me you know we're killing the animals and this and that and the third let me go vegan let me not do this but then you get to that point where Oh, all is God. So it's really not food. Not to say that I go and eat all kind of animals and stuff, but 
you're gonna get to that place. And then I feel as though there's a place after need, after that where we realize that all is God, but we don't even need no food no more. I feel like we're gonna evolve to a place where we all just living off the sun. Like we don't, we don't even have to mess with the animals no more. We're just gonna be energetic beings all over again and just living off the sun and just vibing, you know? That's, that's how I see things, but hey, that's me and my journey. Okay. Quinoa and chickpeas can, yeah, yeah, then can help with the amino acids. I actually cooked some, um, well, not chickpeas. I did some lentils uh, yesterday, but I, I normally do the chickpea when I'm doing that particular um, meal that I did yesterday, but I did lentils with the same seasons and the um, cherry tomatoes and all the onions and peppers. And you got to get your, um, your all colored peppers because keep in mind your peppers I'm trying to get off this live yet, but I have so much to share with y'all. Your peppers, all color peppers, you know, the color of the peppers, they help you with, your, they correlate with the uh, chakra pools of energy. You know how they have the, the red for the root, the yellow help you with your solar plex, the green is helping with the heart. So you want to, even the orange, it helps you with that sacral chakra. So pay attention to that too and make sure you get those colors and also your bell peppers different colors they have something called silica which is the cousin of carbon which you have your carbon footprint your so-called melanin you know your energy force and it helps you you know keep your melanin flowing and so your melanin is no longer be, being toxic because you're healing it by making sure you have your peppers get you all color peppers when you season your food you make sure you have all your little peppers going you gotta have that flavor <laughs> maybe that's because i'm from new orleans okay i'm about to wrap this up because i've been talking for an hour and a half and i don't normally talk that long thank you all for being here this video was from my heart to yours be blessed babe